Will Ryan Ramchick's career with the Saints end this season? It seems like it's an unfortunate possibility. And if that's true, it puts the Saints in an interesting spot, especially at the offensive tackle position. Let's talk about that right here on the Straight Up Saints podcast. You're listening to the Straight Up Saints podcast. What is up, Huda Nation? Welcome back inside another edition of the Straight Up Saints podcast. I'm your host, Chris Rosvogel, and as always, we're brought to you by Scott Vicknair, injury lawyers. You've been injured in any kind of accident, car, truck, 18-wheeler, or hurt offshore. Scott Vicknair handles it all. You give him a call at 504-500-1111 for a free consultation. Yes, a free consultation. They'll always fight for the win. So on Tuesday morning, we got some unfortunate news regarding Ryan Ramchek, and it had to do with his knee injury. And pretty much, to put it bluntly, he has not recovered the way the Saints have progressed. How do we know? Even at the, you know, coaches, GMs, owners type meeting that usually goes down at this time of the year, you got Dennis Allen admitting it to reporters that Ryan Ramchek has not recovered the way they thought. And this is what he had to say. And I'll just read the quote out. At the combine a few weeks ago, I was feeling a lot better about Ramchek's injury. And yet I don't know that I'm seeing as much progress as I was hoping to see at this point. But here's the cool thing. We got plenty of time, no different than what we're talking about with Cam and being a veteran player and probably not utilizing him necessarily a lot during these OTAs and minicamp. I would see the same thing with, I would see the same thing with Ram too. I think we're just going to have to wait and see how that goes as we go through all the off season and as we get into the training camp aspect. So not progressing the way he thought it was says it's similar to Cam, but let's be honest. It's not similar to Cam because when it comes to this particular situation for Ryan Ramchek, the poor guy is dealing with a knee condition that is just deteriorating. It's not like he's got a knee injury that you you repair and you're good to go. Like Ryan Ramchek's knee, for lack of a better word, it's almost like a ticking time bomb. You know that at some point it's not going to be able to hold up under the NFL physicality that you deal with on a weekly basis, and we're kind of reaching that point in his career, which stinks because Ryan Ramchek, when healthy, is one of the best offensive tackles in football, and when he was healthy for the Saints, this guy was an all pro every dang season. Like this, this man went healthy, always delivered for the Saints. Unfortunately, that hasn't been the case now for about three seasons. So this really shouldn't surprise us, but it does put the Saints in a hell of a bad spot. And the reason being is they don't got a single offensive tackle right now on this roster that they can trust, which sounds crazy to say. Like it's still to me, I can't fathom it. And I'm not saying that I'm going to I'm gonna penalize the Saints completely for not signing one in free agency because I know that right now the Saints are actually being financially responsible, which for the first time in a long time, I commend them for doing. So I'm not going to walk that back and be hypocritical and say, oh, you should have spent a bunch of money on an offensive tackle. However, the fact that they don't have a single offensive tackle on the roster right now that you, that I, that any fan of the Saints can trust is scary. It is very scary because this team, and I'm not expecting them to be some contender, but this team is supposed to be one of those let's win now type of teams. How are you supposed to do that if you can't protect your quarterback who isn't great to begin with? And if he doesn't have time, how is he going to hit your receivers who, yeah, we do like Chris Olave and Shahid. do not matter if they're open and the quarterback doesn't have time to hit him. So I find this situation fascinating for all the wrong reasons, unfortunately. And I think it puts the Saints in a spot where it's a no-brainer. They're going to have to go offensive line in the draft. But here's the real question. Do the Saints go offensive line first round, second round, or both? That's the question. Because about a week, two weeks ago, you can say, hey, you know, the Saints can go offensive tackle at 14. They can go receiver at 45. They can go defensive tackle at 45. They can go whatever the hell position they want at 45. or if you really like Brock Bowers, you really like a, a receiver that falls to you at 14, you grab that pass catcher at 14, you go offensive tackle at 45, because this is a really, really deep offensive tackle draft. Like, th- this is the year for the Saints to get an offensive tackle, which is good. Now, though, you can't rely on Ramchek. We thought we could. You can't. You can't rely on Penning, and we don't even know what Penning looks like because he hasn't really played. And that might be even worse than anything else because the fact that they need guys out there and he isn't out there tells you how they feel about him. So they need a left and a right. Are they re-signing Pete? Maybe that will give you kind of a temporary thing, a placeholder for now, makes you not have to be so dependent on drafting an offensive tackle. Or, which is probably the more likely thing, 
Are they going to grab two tackles in this draft? Maybe one early, one later, or one, two. And if that happens, I know there will be some complaints. For me personally, the way I see it right now, if the Saints do not fix their offensive tackle position, the season's over anyway. The season's over. So you got to address it. I do think they will address it. And I do think that there is an argument to be made that in Kubiak's system, you don't need as great offensive tackles as maybe you would have needed in your prototypical pass-heavy offense that we've seen in years past, right? But you should get better at O-line. And you should go out there and get a guy that maybe fits Kubiak's scheme perfectly and could be your offensive tackle, left or right side, whichever, for the next five, six, seven years. And that would be nice for once. And I think for the Saints, this is the spot they're in. And I, I'm very, very fascinated to see how this goes down. That said, because they need to draft an offensive lineman, whether it's first round, second round, I think it puts them in a position where someone's job will probably have to be at stake this April in the draft. And I don't think there's a question about it. The thrill and excitement of March Mania is here. And DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, is giving new customers a shot to turn 5 bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code BOOT. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code BOOT. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash promos for eligibility and deposit or restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. And and look, I see the way this Saints organization values drafting offensive linemen, and that's a good thing. I think it's always a good thing to invest in the trenches. But we got to look at the recent history of what the Saints have drafted offensive line and how those players have produced in the NFL. Because right now, what you're investing, you're not getting your money's worth at all. At all. So let's take it through. Nick Saldaveri was 2023. I'm not ready to say Nick Saldaveri's a bust. I think that's a little premature, but he hasn't seen the field. So because he hasn't seen the field, I don't know what you're getting out of him. So it's a big question mark. That's a fourth round pick, not the highest of draft picks, but a fourth round pick used on O-line. I don't know what you get out of him. 2022, you draft Trevor Penning. First round, we all know about the trade. And, you know, I'm not going to say he's a bust yet either, but man, we're teetering on the line. Like we are, we have one foot out the door ready to enter bust territory. And that second foot is about to come off the ground. So that's two picks now, back to back years. You got to, you haven't gotten anything out of those two players. 2021, Landon Young, sixth round pick. So you don't really get kind of nitpicky off of six round picks, but Landon Young's a player who's been hurt. I actually think he's shown some promise when he's healthy. So, like, that's why I'm not going to bang this pick too much. And I think it's more of a question mark than it would be a bust or an X. But anyway, 2020, Cesar Ruiz. Technically, this is whichever way you want to go. You can make an argument he got a second contract so he's not a bust. Or you can make the argument that, man, he hasn't been that good considering he is a first-round pick. The Saints invested a first-rounder in him. And he's been bad for more than he's been good. That's the way I would put it. Uh, either way, I actually put this one down as a check because he got to that second contract. But again, there's still questions. 2019, Eric McCoy, huge check. No question about that. Eric McCoy's awesome. 2018, Rick Leonard. I don't know where the fuck Rick Leonard is right now. I really can't tell you. I'd have to do a Google search, and I think that would lead me down a dark path of me searching for where Rick, Re Rick Leonard is. And I don't really want to get into that. That's not really what I want to do on this, this week. So Rick Leonard, big X. No question about it. And then the year before, Ramchek. So you hit on Ramchek, you hit on McCoy, you hit on Ruiz, in my opinion. Everything else and the bigger problem is the whiffing on Penning and then not getting any type of depth from those other pieces. Landon Young, never healthy. Nick Saldaveri, we don't know. So the Saints like to invest in O-line. This isn't a, a, a question, right? We see it. Every year, they're going to use at least one pick. And that's when they might think that they have things short up. So the fact that they don't have things short up leads me to believe they're going to use two picks when it comes to offensive line. And that has me saying this. I have no problem with the Saints drafting a line. I'll say it a million times. They don't get better offensive line play. This season's going to be a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. But 
and this is important, someone's job has to be at stake. If the Saints go first round, O-line, and that offensive lineman does not pan out, who is to blame? Is it the coaches? Well, you made some tweaks now. Is it the GM? He's not going anywhere, unfortunately. That's kind of where it's at. Where it's at. Or is it just a player? Either way, someone is responsible. If it's the coaches, you can change that. If it's the person scouting, you can change that. We can't just keep saying it's the player if there is a theme here. And I'm not saying there is a theme. Because I, I think it's important that I detailed the history of the Saints drafting offensive linemen because I think that they have had hits. But if they go back-to-back -back whiffs in the first round with Penning in 2022 and now in 2024 with whoever they grab... It's going to be concerning. And the more concerning thing for me is the fact that this is an offensive tackle heavy draft. So they could go out there and get Olu Fashanu. They could, could go out there and get Fuaga from Oregon State. They could get uh, uh, Faltanu from Washington, who I actually think makes a lot of sense for the Saints because you slide him in at guard if you need a guard, play him at tackle if you need a tackle. So there's, there's depth there and versatility. Uh, or J.C. Lantham from Alabama, whoever it may be, right? There, there are so many tackles in this draft, particularly in the first round. The Saints are going to get a guy that someone out there will love. Maybe me, maybe you, whoever it may be. This person's got to be an immediate contributor. This person's got to look like a guy who can hold his own immediately. And if not, are we entering the territory that I feel about the Saints with defensive ends, where it's like when the Saints draft a defensive end, I'm like, ah, I don't fucking trust you. Davenport hasn't worked out. Peyton Turner hasn't worked out. Foskey, one year in only, so I'm not ready to judge him. I liked him coming out of Notre Dame, but he did nothing his rookie year. So if you whiff on this offensive tackle pick at 14, which the Saints are telling the world we're taking offensive tackle, they are waving the white flag, they're admitting it. Offensive tackle's the pick, let's be honest. I will be concerned if they whiff again because there's got to be some type of level of accountability for you whiffing at a really important thing because. You build through the, the trenches. And I know the Saints know that. And I think it's smart that they do that. But it's not smart if you keep burning assets on those. So all that to be said, the Saints are in a spot right now with Ramchick's career in doubt. They need offensive linemen. There's no question about it. And while I'd love to see them add an offensive weapon to this offense, and I'm not saying they can't, pick 14, let's call it what it is. Pick 14 is going to be an offensive tackle. If it's not, I'll be surprised. And the Saints got to make sure this dude immediately makes a difference and looks like he'd hold his own in the NFL. Because if not, we're going to ask some questions. Because right now, all the questions are about, can Trevor Penning play? If they draft an offensive tackle and this guy doesn't work out, I'm going to say, can you draft an offensive lineman in the first round and get it right? Because the last time they did that was Ryan Ramchek in 2017. And I'm not saying that I'm blaming the Saints for that. But the Saints invest a ton of assets in their offensive line. And it's never as good as it should be on paper. That's the problem for me. But I think it's going to be interesting to see how this all pans out. There's no question about it. The Saints are going to need offensive line help. They're going to go after it in the draft. And we'll see if they get it right. But I want to know, you guys, what do you think about this? 14, 45, those are the picks the Saints have. Do you think they go offensive line twice? One at 14? Do you think they save it for 45? How do you break it down? How do you view it? Who's the guy you want? Let me know in the comment section below. And I'll get back to you. As always, guys, make sure to subscribe to Boot Crew Media's YouTube page, especially this time of the year, man. The Pelicans, really important part of their schedule. Where else would you want to be than listening to Propel's talk? So make sure to subscribe to Boot Crew Media on YouTube, and you'll get more videos like this from the Straight Up Saints podcast, the destination for the Hoodat Nation.